One of our projects is to enrich people's understanding of spirituality. People think of spirituality in a lot of different ways and it looks as though the term is almost intractable for any serious or rigorous use. It's just people disagree too much, how can you possibly use it? But I was very impressed by research by some uh, sociologists and psychologists, including Nancy Ammerman here at Boston University, who managed to show that uh, there are actually recurring patterns in the way the word and idea spirituality gets used. In the most recent uh, research that I've done, we ask people to tell us stories about their everyday lives, and we were particularly listening for where anything religious or spiritual entered into those stories. So where their lives sort of intersected with that uh, dimension of their lives, with something that was beyond the ordinary, if you will. What we wanted to do was to, in this other research group, was to produce an, a, a richer account that was cross-culturally more robust and that could be um, supported by a survey that could be administered online so that we could cheaply study spirituality across cultures with anyone who could speak in the languages of the survey. And so looking through all of these different instances of people talking about spirituality and thinking, well, you know, obviously people are meaning a lot of different things by this, but it's not like everybody's meaning their own individual different thing about, like, about this. So there, there's some kind of recurring ways that people use this term. The Dimensions of Spirituality Project is trying to figure out what aspects of spirituality are the most important to people, um, what dimensions of it. So we tried to develop, um, I think, five dimensions and then a bunch of sub-dimensions underneath all of those. Um, and really just trying to figure out which parts of those are kind of essential to how people understand spirituality or their spirituality. Uh, we worked on it and we figured that we could produce, uh, locate about 20 different sub-dimensions of spirituality. They cluster into about five major dimensions by hypothesis. Are these dimensions, we're sort of hypothesizing, really there? Do they show up uh, when people take the tests? Um, <clears throat> and do they correlate, correlate with each other in any interesting way, either positively or negatively? When people say spiritual but not religious, does that mean that they're not interested in the belief and belonging part, but more in the sense of axiological cultivation, cultivation of these sort of ideals? Does it mean that they tend to have experiences of awe in nature? You know, just trying to get a lay of the land and see if there's any sort of um, patterns where these dimensions fit together in unique ways. It struck um, Professor Wildman, I think, that it was possible that what I was identifying, because it has a lot of resonance with other work about spirituality, uh, that what I was identifying was perhaps actually about some dimensions, that there were some identifiable kind of pieces, I guess you might say, of the whole that might constitute spirituality. And that these might be uh, identifiable or measurable um, a little more efficiently than going out and spending hours at a time interviewing people. Um, so that if we had an instrument, if we had some questions that could be asked um, more uh, efficiently, that it might be useful uh, to be able to tap the, the breadth of things that, uh, that spirituality means. The ethical aspects of life people would often include as spiritual. People think of spiritual as their religious communities, the sense of belonging to a community, um, experiences of awe, uh, whether in nature or in a church or wherever, the sense of feeling, you know, small before something um, sort of transcendent. And then there's the, the ethical uh, spirituality that, that just about everybody agrees that if you want to call yourself a spiritual person, you better be good. Uh, that they want to be able to see this in, in people's lives. All these different layers of spirituality, we're trying to develop a survey that can pick up on these different layers, these different dimensions that we're calling, is what we're calling it, um, and to see if those um, dimensions relate to each other in reliable ways um, across different populations, um, such that there might be sort of an underlying um, structure uh, of what spirituality is, that it's not just a word that we're throwing around, but there is some sort of 
undergirding. So what we were able to do was to identify sort of ground up, here's how this term is actually being used by a fairly representative sample of Americans in their everyday storytelling. Just a recognition that spirituality, whatever it is we're pointing to when we use this word, is a very complicated thing, which we can tell based on the things that people are willing to associate with it. And then the one thing that I did add was a kinesthetic um, to, or subdimension, bodily awareness of their spirituality, and if that's something that's important to them, um, whether it be through um, physical movements in prayer or singing or rituals, or things that are kind of outside of the box, like yoga or dancing or running, um, things that we don't typically think of as religious or spiritual, but people feel that they're, they're spiritual experiences for them. This is a classic example of what you can do when you take religion's complexity seriously. It's so complex we can't study it properly using scientific methods. That's one attitude. Another attitude is let's simplify it. We're going to simplify it so much that a religious studies person can't even recognize it anymore. And then what we do scientifically won't ever win respect over there. So both of those extremes, are, from my point of view, uh, losers. They started adding some other things uh, into the mix. And I don't know how many dimensions they've ended up with at this point. Because um, once you turn a bunch of philosophers and religious studies people loose, <laughs> uh, you, you end up, I think, with a, a much broader array of things than what sort of ordinary people of the population might come up with. Why not find pieces that you can study scientifically with great sophistication, using the science to increase the sophistication of the interpretation on the humanities and religious studies side? Quite often you can do that. And that's a classic example in the dimensions of spirituality inventory. It's an area where science can help increase the sophistication of the interpretation that you have inside psychology of religion and inside the scientific study of religion on the social sciences side. Now we're just waiting for numbers um, and seeing what those results will be. And then I think the plan is to um, so we have to pare down the survey. The final survey will be 40 items. And then um, I believe there is a group that wants to use it for um, spirituality and health research. The Dimensions of Spirituality survey, which is on exploringmyreligion.org, is one of, our, one of our users' favorite surveys because it gives such interesting, thought-provoking feedback. When you take it, you see these 20 different dimensions of your spirituality organized in such a way that you see how, uh, for example, your interest in aesthetic things is stronger or weaker than the average, or uh, maybe your, your tendency to appreciate ritual, or your uh, confidence, uh, the confidence in ancestors and their role in your spirituality, these sorts of things. But I found it myself a little bit to take that survey, even though I designed the instrument.